A daughter yearns for a family. My dad got murdered when I was one. And turns to sex and drugs to cope. He's afraid of being alone. Using drugs and drinking alcohol to fill any kind of void that I felt. See how she broke free. That's when I felt loved and felt like I was just accepted and cared about. Plus, Chris Wark shares how he went from stage three colon cancer to cancer free with no chemotherapy, all on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Ephraim Graham with this week's top five from Studio Five. At number five, the Bible say, yay though she walked in the valley with the shadow of Little Ray Riding Hood and the three bears. The media mogul behind Medea spread some Merry Christmas cheer. I was trying to do this anonymously, but um, due to some circumstances, y'all know how nothing stays secret these days. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and tell you, if you have a layaway at the Walmart, I have paid for all of your layaways for Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. You gotta go into the Walmart, get your layaway. You heard it. He's paying off all customer layaways at two Atlanta area Walmart stores to the tune of $430,000. It made me cry. Like, it, it took such a weight off my shoulders because taking care of six kids by yourself with the help is hard. Very, very, very hard, especially around Christmas. Tyler's giving spirit touched rapper Kid Rock, who tweeted, I followed your lead and paid off the layaway at my local Walmart in Nashville. Merry Christmas and God bless you. This is a Christmas miracle blessing and we got to bless somebody else. Somebody blessed us, we got to bless somebody else. At number four. Janelle Monet is here with me to reveal best country album. Janelle? Ooh, best country album. Nominations for the 61st Annual Grammy Awards are in. That's how it keeps you in cycles. Cycles. And Jonathan McReynolds' Cycles is up for best gospel performance, alongside some other friends of Studio 5. Corinne Hawthorne's Won't He Do It? Jacqueline Carr's You Will Win. Oh, you're never and Tori Kelly's Never Alone. Oh, never reckless love of God. Corey Asbury's Reckless Love, Mercy Me's Grace Got You. For King and Country's Joy. Torin Wells, Known, and Lauren Daigle's You Say are all up for Best Contemporary Christian Performance. At number three. That's the undeniably incredible voice of Andrea Pacelli. How do you say Merry Christmas in, in Italian? Buon Natale. Buon Natale. Buon, Buon Natale. Nat Very Natale. simple. The Italian singer opens up about his Christian journey in his Heart of Christmas special, shot at his home in Italy. We know you're passionate about your audience. We can read many things online about you, but what there is not a lot of is your strong faith. It's on TBN, December 20th. May your days be merry and bright. At number two. <laughs> NBC's Today Show says goodbye to Kathy Lee Gifford, with its news chief saying she's generously agreed to stay through the show's April 7th anniversary. And Kathy Lee saying, I leave today with a grateful heart, but I'm truly excited about this new creative season in my life. Gifford has new books, new music, and new movies in the works. I heard you say, or at least someone say about you, and I could be mistaken, that this is the most exciting time in your life. You know what, it's most, uh, it is an exciting time in my life. Uh, you would think that I'd be, you know, hanging up my, um, <laughs> your heels. <laughs> my big old heels and, and heading into the sunset. It's the exact opposite of that. At number one. I speak of wondrous, unfamiliar lessons from childhood. Make Chance the Rapper is taking a break from his music to spend more time in his Bible. What you thinking about? 
In this Instagram post with his new nephew in his arms, the rapper shares, I'm on a plane headed out of the country on my first sabbatical. I'm going away to learn the word of God, which I admittedly am unfamiliar with. I've been brought up by my family to know Christ, but I haven't taken it upon myself to really just take a couple of days and read my Bible. I made it through, made it through, made it through. I made it through, yeah. He asked, how much time do we spend as followers of Jesus to really just read and know his word? I'm definitely guilty of not devoting enough time to it. He adds, the next generation of Bennett's is here and I need to be able to give my nephew the knowledge. Well, Ephraim's with me now, and what do you want to lead off with? We can what start with Chance, if you, you like. Chance? <laughs> yes. Right. He, I can't believe he's just taken... Just leaving, saying, left the country, won't say where he is. Um, he is asking, he's sharing some of what he's reading, so if mm -hmm. you want to read along with him, like about 15 minutes ago, he posted reading the book of Galatians today, if you want to join me. It's a real short book, and that, those are his, his exact words. Um, been a Christian for a long time, but says he... Sure, but it's deep. You don't know enough. I guess I don't know enough about the Bible, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that many of you are, are just as guilty. You know, I was raised in the church. I know Jesus, yes, but I don't know his word as well as I should. So he says he's coming back. When he does come back, he's going to have several books of the Bible read, and he will have kicked his smoking habit because he is giving up smoking as well. Good for him. Yes, and the Word of God is helping him to do that too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. All right, Kathy Lee's leaving morning television, which is like, what? I know. <laughs> she is a, a, a staple, a fixture in morning television. Uh, April 7th will be our last day on the NBC Today show, which will be her 11th anniversary. Should we start plotting her comeback? <laughs> Let's pull her right over here. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy Lee, you're welcome. Yes. Uh, come pay us a visit. She is, um, she's really busy. She spent much of the summer in Scotland shooting a movie. She's written two books that we've talked to her about mm -hmm. within the last just few months, both of them on the best settle this even as we speak and when she writes books I mean they're not light and fluffy books I mean these are no, books indeed. that take a lot of deep research um, her children are in LA one's uh, her son is a screenwriter her daughter is an actress so she's away from them a lot um, having to be in New York so this will certainly free up and spend more time with them but she's got a lot of projects new music still writing books working on the film doing the score for that she's a busy woman at 65 very busy. She's young. Yes, she's got a lot of living to do. The older she is. <laughs> yes. She's young. I know. Yeah. I know she looks yeah. younger than when she was I on. I know somebody uh, in television at 89, still yeah. doing daily television. I know about you. Too. <laughs> 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 Moving a lot better than most of us, unfortunately for us. I gotta start taking better care of myself. Yes, I tell you. <laughs> All right, Tyler Perry is, is doing something I think is absolutely spectacular. That was so say. beautiful. Yeah, and, and what a genius move to to target the layaway at Walmart. Absolutely. To say, all right, here's people who have already expressed aspiration. This is what I want for my family. Mm -hmm. I can't afford it now. Can you lay it away? I'm and to come in and say, okay, I'm going to take care of all of that. Brilliant move. <laughs> Brilliant move. And to hear the people, uh, just in terms of what a burden was lifted, there's one woman uh, who was interviewed and she said, it's such a gift because our car just died and we were trying to decide, do we pay to get the car fixed now and or do we get the layaway because it's getting so close to Christmas? She goes, well, now we don't have to make that choice. We can go ahead and get the car fixed and the layaway is taken care of. All you have to do yeah. is come in with a penny. I can tell you already, take care of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you had no choice. You can't get to work you unless you get, get the to car. Work. Yes. Yeah, you stop work and then things really start getting better. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, beautiful yeah. story. Beautiful story. And um, as you saw with Kid Rock, it's, it's, it's spreading. Others saying, well, that's a good idea. Let me go do the same thing. Yeah, Pretty and he even nice. said, God, God bless. God bless you. Yes, yeah. God bless you. Who knew? <laughs> Inspiring. Yeah. Inspiring indeed. Uh, Grammys. You got a favorite? I do have a favorite. Um, uh, Jonathan Reynolds, when he came on the scene back in 2013, has long been my favorite. So I'm certainly rooting for him. I want to say this is his second time being nominated. He's nominated for Best Gospel Album and uh, Best Single. So you're not I in love. overwhelming love. 
I, I, I love it. Um, that's that's a separate category, so I can root oh, for. Oh, right. <laughs> so I can root that's for. That's a separate. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. So I can root for Corey Asbury as well. Uh, love him. Love that song. That song for me never gets old. Oh yeah. You know, um, never. You can hear them starting to play it at church, and you think, you'd be like, oh, oh that yeah. again? Yeah. No, that yeah. again. Yes, yeah. I love it. So yeah. rooting for him as well. Yeah. But you're not rooting for Lauren Daigle. I, I applaud. I love Lauren Daigle. Listen to it as well. It's still new. It's because she didn't come on your show? No, not yet. No. <laughs> no, I still, I, still I, still Lauren. I still love Lauren. I still love Lauren. I still love Lauren. She didn't come on your show? No, that's not it. I promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but Lauren, you could say yes. <laughs> she could? Listen. <laughs> We're rooting for you as well. But Corey Asbury, I'm, I'm praying he wins. That would be nice. Want. Okay. That's what I like to All right. Mm hmm you got a favorite? <laughs> uh, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. see, see? Yeah, so there we go. I'm a, yes. Yeah. 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 We'll There's, be watching. It's not just good music. It is absolutely deep and tells the heart of God uh, in a way that most songs don't. Right, absolutely. And, and you just going through those lyrics and experiencing that, you're exper experiencing his nature. Absolutely. Uh, and it truly is overwhelming. Yep. So, Reckless, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show. It's called Studio 5. You can watch it online at CBN.com or on the CBN News Channel. All you have to do is check your local listings. Well, come up, coming up, he found himself face-to-face -face with death at the age of 26. Find out how Chris Wark survived and then beat cancer after refusing chemotherapy right after this. Chris Wark was an active 26-year-old husband, recording music, touring with his band, and leading real estate deals. Then right before Christmas, he was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. Best-selling author, international speaker, and wellness crusader Chris Wark found himself face-to-face -face with death. At 26 years old, he was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. Instead of using traditional medicine, he radically changed his diet. In his new book, Chris Beat Cancer, he shares his story of healing himself with nutrition and offers options for others to consider when facing sickness and disease. Well, Chris is with me now. Thanks for being here. Uh, this is the Christmas season, and 15 years ago, that wasn't a Merry Christmas for you. It was, it was the worst Christmas of my life. <laughs> it was. Yeah, uh, you know, a cancer diagnosis is a funny thing because it really cuts this dividing line in your life. Like, it's kind of like the life of Christ, B.C. and A.D., like before cancer and after the diagnosis, right? And uh, it changes everything. At 26, you're not supposed to get cancer. I mean, you're, you're not, but young adult cancer is on the rise. Why, why is that? Uh, a couple factors, three factors really, our diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle is a little bit separate, but our diet has gotten progressively worse, more unhealthy. I was in the, I grew up in the fast food generation and it's only gotten worse. Um, Environmental pollution has never been higher in the U.S. And then we are also have become more sedentary. So we're less active. We're just sitting around watching TV all day or playing video games or not moving, not exercising. So all those factors are contributing to. I feel like I need to stand up right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Get on the <laughs> treadmill. Know, I, I know, you know, sitting is now called the new smoking. Yeah. And uh, the more you sit, the more you're letting, you're, you're, you're letting your body down. That's right. And. One thing that probably most people don't know, every, I think everybody's heard that the number one cause of cancer is smoking, mm -hmm. cigarettes. But number two is obesity. It's the second leading cause of cancer. And uh, because when you're obese, your body becomes an environment where cancer can thrive because you have increased inflammation and decreased immune function. So um, it's, it, you know, if that doesn't motivate people to, to start exercising more, get in the gym more, I don't know, I'm out, I'm out of suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what, was, what, what got you to the doctor? Pain, abdominal pain. I, I, you know, I had a colonoscopy, they found this tumor. They said, you gotta get surgery right away. So I had the surgery and then they said, you need nine to 12 months of chemotherapy. And at that point I was like, well, hold on. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. And I felt like I was already sick. I had cancer, there was a problem. But I, the idea of poisoning my way back to health didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed about it and, and God just revealed 
sort of an, an alternate path, which was going back to uh, living simply, getting in harmony with the earth, eating fruits and vegetables, food from the earth, organic, and getting away from all the toxic pr processed stuff that I've been putting in my body. Mm -hmm. um, did your family go along with that decision? Uh, most of them did not. They thought I'd lost my mind. And, uh, you know, it took time for them to come around. <laughs> but, you know, they were afraid for me. They loved me. They wanted me to just to do what the doctor says. But the problem is um, the overall death rate from cancer has only improved 5% in 60 years. So they have made very little progress in curing the disease or improving survival for late stage cancers like mine. And I didn't know that at the time. My family didn't know that. I was just operating on instinct. But something inside, you know, my instincts, intuition, the Holy Spirit, all of the above was saying, mm -hmm. the way you're living is killing you and you've got to change your life. And so that's what I set about to do. And that's what the book's all about. What was your first step? First step was converting to an all raw organic diet. So only fruits and vegetables, only raw food. So nothing cooked at all? No, straight back to the Garden of Eden, right? Okay. Only raw fruits and vegetables. So did you blend it? Uh, did, did you? I, was, I bought a juicer, uh -huh. started juicing, and then I started making giant salads full of the most potent anti-cancer vegetables, which is going to be broccoli, cauliflower, kale, garlic, onions, those type vegetables, salad vegetables, not bacon bits or cheese or ranch dressing. <laughs> and then uh, eating tons of fruit, fruit smoothies. Um, and so then, you just said a quart. What's wrong with ranch dressing? Well, uh, ranch dressing is a processed food, and animal protein... What if you make it on your own? Animal protein... Using, using yogurt. It fuels cancer growth. That's really? the problem. Yeah. Animal protein... The is. hormones in dairy and in, in meat, animal protein, as long um, fuel cancer growth. Hmm. And when you look at the populations around the world with the lowest rates of cancer, they consume the lowest amount of animal food. So they're not pure vegans, mm -hmm. but they only consume about 5% of their diet from animal foods. So, um, so that was the, the first step is like eliminating anything that could potentially be contributing to cancer growth and animal protein definitely does. That's the first I've heard that. I, I, I knew about beef. Yep. Um, and I knew about, um, some forms of dairy. Uh, I thought yogurt was sort of a safe place. Uh, I knew about sh sugar, uh, that that's a prime fuel for cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first I heard, animal protein. Yeah, because it, it raises IGF-1, which is, which is insulin-like growth factor in the body. And IGF-1 is, without a doubt, medically documented to promote cancer growth. It's like cancer rocket fuel. Okay. Here you are 15 years later. Are you still juicing? Are you still salading? Is this, is, this is not a... You know, I'm going to do this for a couple months and then go back to what I really like. Uh, no. I want some hamburgers and fries today. Yeah, it was a long-term healing strategy because you don't get cancer overnight. You don't heal it overnight. And so it's more like a marathon than a sprint. Now, I'm 15 years out. I'm cancer-free. But uh, it took several years for my body to rebuild and get to the place where I was, you know, my immune system had been strengthened and my body had dealt with any remaining cancer stem cells. So today I still eat a plant-based diet uh, and I'm not all raw. I eat cooked food <laughs> and I still love to juice, love carrot well, juice. Why the juice. difference between raw and cooked? Well, the raw food diet is a very aggressive detoxification and healing diet. So it's very powerful. Uh, and I was all raw for no the first 90 days and then incorporated cooked food after that. So it's not something that you would eat for the rest of your life. In fact, there's no population on anywhere in the world that eats an all raw diet. Um, but it's just a, it's a diet that's like, okay, I'm pulling out all the stops. Like I'm going to, I'm going hardcore. And that's, that's the way you do it. Okay. Go all, all core. If you want to know, know more about Chris's book, it's called Chris Beat Cancer, a comprehensive plan for healing naturally. It's available wherever books are sold. And Chris, thanks for sharing your journey. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah. God bless you. Still to come, a young mom loses custody of her five children. I wanted to die. I, didn't, I, hated, I hated who I was. I hated what I had done. I felt like everything that I, I loved was just taken. Hear how she restored her life when we come back. Kayla Diaz spent her childhood wanting a family. But when she finally had children of her own, 
She spent her time chasing her next high. Growing up on California's Central Coast, Kayla Diaz longed for a family. My childhood was pretty lonely. My dad got murdered when I was one, and so I always grew up missing him and wanting him, and I had a pretty hard childhood. As a single parent, her mom struggled to cope. She tried to be there as much as she could, but drugs had a hold on her, and alcohol had a hold on her, and relationships with men had a hold on her, so she was never really fully there. What I was afraid of as a child is that my mom would get taken from me how my dad did. I was afraid of being alone. Kayla found some security and acceptance with her peers, but they weren't the best influence on her. By sixth grade, she was using marijuana and getting drunk on a regular basis. Drinking and smoking marijuana led to me fighting, led to me not caring about school, ditching school. It led to me having anger towards other people. After one particular fight in eighth grade, she was ordered to anger management counseling. Yeah, I remember telling my counselor that I wanted to have a baby. And, and she asked me why. And I said that because I want to be able to love someone and have them love me and nothing could ever take that away. So I was already in my mind trying to build the family that I always wanted. So at 14, Kayla got pregnant, but it didn't turn out like she planned. She moved in with her boyfriend who became physically and emotionally abusive toward her and her child. Kayla saw no way out. I tried to leave a few times and it just wouldn't, he wouldn't let me. Tell me it would kill me if I left. He would just put, put so much fear in me and I feared that I wouldn't be able, even though it was such an unhealthy relationship, I felt like I wouldn't be able to make it if I wasn't in that relationship. Since he was also a meth addict, Kayla hoped she could stop the abuse by using drugs with him. Once I started using them, especially meth, it took everything I had. It took all of my self-respect. I stopped caring about myself completely when I started using meth. That's when I felt that I deserved to get hit. Like I felt like I was doing wrong, so I deserved wrong things to happen to me. The next few years were a chaotic blur of drugs and abuse. By the time she was 23, Kayla and her boyfriend had five children together, but she was too busy trying to get high to take care of them. I didn't care about any kind of family then. I stopped even caring fully about my kids and what they were thinking or feeling. And, and I just turned to, to using drugs and drinking alcohol to fill any kind of void that I felt. Kayla was 25 when the drug use and neglect caught up with her, and she lost custody of all five of her children. I wanted to die, and I, I, hated, I hated who I was. I hated what I had done. I felt like everything that I, I loved was just taken. With her dreams of a family shattered, Kayla left her boyfriend. She still hoped to change, but couldn't break free from drugs. After two years of failing to quit her habit, a friend suggested she try a Christian-based rehab program. It was there she started learning about Jesus. After a couple of months, a visiting pastor came to speak. Kayla finally put it all together. And I don't remember exactly what he was telling us about Jesus that day, or I don't remember even really why I wanted to, but I knew that I wanted to accept him because Jesus was good and he would, he would help me and he was love and so I accepted Jesus into my heart that day. And then that's when I felt loved and felt like I was just accepted and cared about. And that's when I began my journey to really understand what God can do. Kayla continued her treatment at another program where she found healing and freedom through Jesus Christ. It was there that he just cleaned my heart off and put forgiveness in my heart and put love in my heart. Like the first program, I, I accepted Jesus and I fell in love with Jesus. And then the second program, I got delivered, you know, and healed and set free and cleaned off and just became even more in love with Jesus. Kayla has been free from all addictions ever since. 
She was also awarded visitation rights with her kids, who had all been adopted into loving homes. When I'm with my kids now, I'm teaching them about God, and I'm just encouraging them with the love that God gave me, and now the time that I get to spend with them, I can truly be the woman of God, the mom of God that he wanted in their lives from the beginning. Today, Kayla's married and says God has truly restored her. He's provided for me every single thing. The husband who came into my life, he's provided. My mom being clean and sober, he's provided. Peace in my heart, he's provided. He provides it all. I no longer am searching or trying to make something happen on my own. I'm just trusting him that he'll give me every single thing that I need. And that's the key, trusting him to give you every single thing that you need. When you try to do it on your own, you try to do it on your own willpower, you'll find out fairly quickly you're just not strong enough. Uh, once you open the door to behavior patterns that turn into compulsions, once that gets a hold of you, uh, it's very hard to break free. But here's the good news. God wants to set you free. How do you get that? Well, you ask him for it. And you say, God, I can't do this, but I know you can. So will you come into my heart? Will you set me free? If you want help with that prayer, we're here for you. We're not here to judge you. We're certainly not here to condemn you. We're here to tell you there is a living God who loves you. He loves you so much. He was willing to die for you. He was willing to pay the complete penalty for everything you've ever done wrong. He's willing to take all of that away. He's willing to regenerate you from your innermost being. All you have to do is ask. So if you want to do that, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Psalms for you. How precious is your unfailing love, O oh God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. God bless you. We'll see you again.